Tensions between the U.S. and China on high this morning after a blunt meeting between the two nations' top diplomats, the first since the U.S. shot down a suspected Chinese spy balloon earlier this month, in a, quote, very direct and candid meeting on the sidelines of the Munich Security Conference, Secretary of State Antony Blinken told his counterpart Wang Yi the balloon was an unacceptable violation of U.S. sovereignty that must never occur again. The State Department said a senior official said that Blinken also criticized China for not engaging in military-to-military -military dialogue over the incident when Chinese military officials, quote, refused to pick up the phone. And underlying a concern raised in earlier remarks by the vice president, Blinken warned China there would be consequences if they provide military aid to Russia in its war against Ukraine. The informal meeting came hours after China's top diplomat criticized the U.S. response to the balloon in a speech to the leaders attending the conference, including a bipartisan group of top U.S. lawmakers. And joining me now from the Munich Security Conference, Chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, Michael McCall, and Chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Mike Turner. Thank you both for coming on. Thanks, Pamela. Thank you, Pamela. So, Congressman McCall, I want to start with you here. Uh, the U.S.-China relationship is a key topic of discussion at the Munich summit, where you are. China's foreign minister addressed the gathering and mocked the U.S. response to the Chinese surveillance balloon, calling it, quote, absurd and hysterical and an effort to, quote, divert attention from its domestic problems. What is your response to him? Well, you know, I, I had a conversation with the secretary's team. I, I would send a very star, stern warning to him that we will not tolerate a, a, a spy balloon that's con, you know, committing espionage over the United States uh, again. And uh, I know there's talk of a private meeting, uh, but this was a bit of a shot across the bow at this, at this conference. Uh, and I know uh, Blinken spoke as well. Uh, this is a time when our relations are, have never been more... Uh, the tension is very high right now, I should say. Uh, and I think the spy balloon was so embarrassing. Uh, going over three major military installations with nuclear warheads, uh, the idea it could capture imagery and send it back to Beijing to the mothership caused a lot of damage uh, to our national security, but also uh, political damage in the sense that Americans saw this uh, with the naked eye uh, and it was flying so low to the ground. And, of course, the administration has countered uh, that it prevented the balloon from being able to gather information on sensitive U.S. sites, and it learned valuable information from studying it. And they ultimately shot it down. Secretary Blinken's trip to China was um, delayed, canceled, and China's actions were condemned. But President Biden this week stressed that the U.S. is not seeking a new Cold War with China and said he plans to speak with President Xi at some point. You just heard there uh, Congressman Turner from Congressman McCarthy about just how uh, how the tensions are right now between the U.S. and China, how uh, bad the relations are. What should his message be to Xi? And do you think that Biden is right to try to lower the temperature with China in the wake of this incident? Well, remember, the balloon was an escalation, and it was not thwarted from its mission. It flew over our missile defense sites, our nuclear weapons sites, and then it wasn't taken out of the game till the game was over uh, into the Atlantic. The, the, the reality is, is that the administration admitted then after it had, had shot down the balloon that it should have been more proactive in the three subsequent shoot downs that it did of what appears to be harmless objects over North America. So the administration does have you know, a shift that it needs to take and taking all of this a lot more serious, uh, being uh, you know, more forward also uh, with the American public and with China as to what we're facing and what their espionage plans were. But, uh, you know, here, I do think that there, there is an opportunity to get back to a normal dialogue with China. No one, of course, wants a Cold War, but that isn't the issue. What we want is a China that is not going to be an aggressor state, uh, that's not going to be building up its military and threatening the United States, and certainly not, not making the negative comments that it, it's making instead of just openly apologizing for sending a spy balloon over our, our most sensitive military sites. So, uh, as we just heard, you both have been critical of President Biden's response to China here at home. But politics traditionally stops at the water's edge. Are you and the Biden administration on the same page and presenting a united message to the world when it comes to countering China, where you are right now in Munich? Congressman McCall, first to you. Yeah, I think we have a unique opportunity to, to be bipartisan on, on this is issue of, uh, you know, national security against one of the greatest threats to uh, 
to this country and the world, for that matter. Um, and I think, uh, you know, the fact the select committee was uh, uh, voted on by a large majority of Democrats. So when we talk about particularly export controls, this balloon, uh, by the way, had a lot of American parts in it. Mm -hmm. We know that the hypersonic missile that went around the world with precision was built on the backbone of American technology. So there's a lot of discussion here uh, at this summit about how can we, you know, they steal a lot of this from us, but we don't have to sell them the very technology they can put it in their advanced weapon systems to then turn against either uh, Taiwan and the Pacific or eventually possibly the United States of America. I think there's great bipartisanship on this issue, by the way, as well as Ukraine. I think our delegation has been very unified in our support for Ukraine and putting everything we can from a weapons perspective into Ukraine so they can defeat the Russians. All right, let's turn to Ukraine. As you mentioned, Congressman McCall, it is a big talker there at the summit. I remember last year, um, everyone was talking about Russia getting ready to invade. Now it's been nearly a year. Uh, and nearly a dozen members in your party have introduced a so-called Ukraine fatigue resolution to end U.S. support for Ukraine. And a new poll is showing support among Americans for arming Ukraine is dropping how concerned, Congressman McCall, are foreign leaders you're speaking to that American support for Ukraine, particularly within your own party, is weakening? Well, I know that Bill uh, had about 10 co-sponsors out of 435 members of Congress. I would say that support is still very strong. And this delegation, this bipartisan, very strong support for Ukraine. I think where you're seeing a split from the administration, though, and I have to say, that, Pamela, this is bipartisan as well, is that for the past year, we've been very slow at getting these weapons in in the name of it being too provocative, whether it be stingers, javelins, these uh, short-range artillery, now longer-range artillery, attack them. They can take out the Iranian drones in Crimea and also aviation like F-16. If we put this stuff in from the very beginning of this conflict, uh, a year from now may have been very different as we look at the anniversary on February 24th. The longer they drag this out, they play into Putin's hands. He wants this to be a long protracted war because he knows that potentially uh, he'll lose, uh, we could lose the will of the American people and therefore the Congress. And we're seeing the same dynamic in the European parliaments. Strong support now, uh, but they're worried that if this doesn't uh, end with a resolution you know, sooner rather than later, uh, this will be an issue for us. Yeah. And you mentioned, you know, the need for Ukraine to have more weapons to fight Russia. A bipartisan group in Congress, including some members on your own committee, wrote to President Biden urging him to give Ukraine F-16 fighter jets. You said the U.S. should give Ukraine, quote, everything they need to win this thing. Congressman McCall, do you believe the administration is considering taking that step? You know, I hope so. The attack have been on, on the table for months and they haven't sent those in. And the same delivery applies to attack as it does to the high Mars. Uh, but, the, you know, the fact is, uh, the longer they wait, the longer this, this uh, conflict will prevail. Uh, I, I honestly, every top military expert I talked to at this conference agreed with what I was saying. And I think, uh, you know, Mike Turner, uh, that we need to throw everything we can into this fight uh, so that they can win. And Zelensky's going to tell us that soon as well. He had a speech here at the conference saying the same thing. Uh, yeah. And I think the momentum's building for this to happen. Congressman Turner, to you, you're also on the Armed Services Committee. We should note, according to Politico, the top Democrat on that committee, uh, Representative Adam Smith, said at the Munich Security Conference, quote, <laughs> There's more of a consensus that there that people realize that Ukraine is not going to militarily retake Crimea. I'm wondering if you agree with that assessment. You know, statements like that, Pamela, are not helpful. And, you know, we're at an international conference. You mentioned Republicans. There are 20 Democrats that sent a letter to Biden saying that we should have immediate negotiations and bring an end to this war. Putin right, hears that. Right, but they retracted that letter. And there's like a, this, you would agree there's, a difference. Pamela, on, there's you know, a difference. Pamela, as you know, Pamela, Pamela, you can't retract. Resolution and withdrawing Pamela, funding, but go you ahead. can't. Pamela, you can't retract a letter from Putin hearing it. So it doesn't affect, have any effect. When 20 right, members recklessly write a letter, who are Democrats, not who, who write 
who are Democrats and write a letter to the president. By the way, Pamela, none of the conversations that we're having here are the kind that you're asking us questions of. No one here is having well, the debate on Democrats Well, that's good to know. Tell us more about the conversations. Only there. when we we're in this it. interview. Only in one interview view has people talked about Republicans and Democrats. What they've asked is, is there bipartisan support? In fact, I just did a panel with uh, Director Burns indicating our full bipartisan support on the intelligence side, on the armed services side, for full support uh, for Ukraine. You have a handful on both sides, both sides, Pamela, uh, who have, have been cautious or who have said that they don't support or they want support to come to an end. That's not the over 400, you know, uh, there are 435 members of Congress. There are probably 400 that are for continuing this direction and this path.